Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Information. The Charmony Festival is about to start. I'm so excited! Hey! You guys here for the Charmony Festival too? Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about. But I heard it's a lot of fun! Well, back in my home world, Anaria, we have festivals like that all the time. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. Oh, come on! The Charmony Festival is a once in an amber era event! How can a birthday party compare? Well, you never know, right? Maybe on her world, birthdays only happen once in Amber Era. Anyway, let's forget about that. Have you heard about the uh, unsettling things happening in the dreamscape? Unsettling things? What could possibly go wrong? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival! I've been looking forward to it! Relax. With a big event like this, there's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Don't worry. If anything does happen, the family will be on top of it. <sighs> oh, that's a relief. I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues out of these two. They're clueless. Yeah. Oh, I want to see something real fast. <laughs> Locked and loaded. Sorry, I just want to shoot. But I could shoot one of those things. Yeah. Wait, hold on. I see something. Fuck. Hold on. Let me do something before. You can actually book a stay on credit. This Fuck. place is too big. I better not wander too far in case he can't find me later. Man, I saw something I can shot, shoot or something. Sucks. Why is there a record of your? Greetings. I'm Cody of the Bloodhound family, head of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? Hello. So, uh, there's something I wanted to ask about. I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. Do you think there's anything to be worried about? I've traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation, and I don't want my trip to be ruined. Um... What do you mean? Wait. You haven't heard. I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Mm. Ah. <laughs> That's a relief to hear. She doesn't appear to be acting. So, it seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. Back already? Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder if sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. Neither the staff nor the guests seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape, and wherever we go, all we see is people enjoying themselves. Definitely not a good sign. I agree. Another unusual thing is that the Oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape. I walked around the hotel, but didn't meet a single member of the Oak family on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. If I remember correctly, the head of the Yoke family is that Sunday guy, right? Mm-hmm. We shouldn't linger here too long. 
Let's go back to the Express for now. Uh, not so fast. Have you ever robbed the IPC, bro? If you run away now, everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing. But let's stay put for now. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain outsiders, so they won't do anything reckless. See? The IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. I gave a backup plan to the memo keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the dreamscape, she'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality... A secret signal. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the memo keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill, if you have more backup plans in the future, I hope you'll let me know in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... things can go awry. And that would leave all backup plans completely useless. How do we get into the VIP lounge? Oh. This is where my street smarts come into play. Alright. You're the lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. How may I assist you? We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. We wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Now we've been waiting here forever without any food or water. What the fork, man? Is this how the family treats its guests? Is this your idea of street smarts? Starting an altercation? <laughs> it's called standing up for your rights. Yep, that's a true American indeed. I apologize for the inconvenience. Please wait while we try to contact Mr. Sunday. I'll arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there while you wait. <laughs> See? Just like that. Mm -hmm. Just... Uh, just... Don't call yourself a nameless next time. <laughs> wow, this bar's something else. Certainly worthy of the planet of festivities. Oh, let me get that treasure. Give me that treasure right there. Hey, cowboy! Uh, one piece. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Hey, I have an order for a bottle of Asdana's White Oak. Can you help us find it? Asdana's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no way. Are you sure you're not mistaken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. Uh, I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Well, could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? Then what should we do now? Oh, no need to rush. Well, let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early and... He hasn't come yet. Now, let's see what kind of juice malts you all have here. Huh. Well, 
Give me a glass of Heenum Valley, 40 years. I'll have it neat, no ice. Wow, that's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. <laughs> it's on the house. What can I get for you? Anything you recommend is fine. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboom juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. Hmm, just one minute. All right. Ah, this flavor. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Ooh, really hits the spot. Truly the finest sherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel, Earth. Is that really something that humans enjoy? Yep. <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. Let's give the memo keeper another half system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities, but the public is unaware of it. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions, let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> if what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is a little complicated, to say the least. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about regarding Acheron. Mm. As you know, the faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous folks in the cosmos to mess with. <clears throat> Who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? It's like asking for a death wish. Um, I don't know, dude. Anything's possible at this point. Maybe she had her reasons. I would say. Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that uh, the rainbow set lets their lux arrow do all the beating? Talking. Do all the talking. Well, you know what I mean. Even though the Galaxy Rangers have been out of sight for years, we've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. But that Acheron lady, she doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. On the contrary, she's highly logical and organized. She knows exactly when to hold back and when to strike without mercy. Mm. And do you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a Galaxy Ranger? <sighs> I'm not entirely sure, but I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a Galaxy Ranger, or perhaps she's trying to lure us out for some reason, which I can't figure out. Anyway, what worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual. Unless the invitations weren't sent by them. Uh, if that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival, despite the chaos. Maybe it's she pay the harmony pulling the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't and fudge. They even break their own rules. Yeah. But eons don't. They stick to their determined path and never turn back. Even if they reach a dead end. You think Shipei's will is behind all this? It may not necessarily be Shipei. There's definitely some higher entity involved. 
I know it may sound pessimistic, but if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? It's much simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh, so you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because their absolutely right leader is gone? Exactly. I believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right. It's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities, even with limited insight and judgment. I don't know what you've been through, but I agree that people must take responsibility for their choices, because no one else can do it for them. That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter and figure out her true intentions. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the Memo Keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. I promise. You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. Well, going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. By the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important-looking guests? What's your plan? It's simple. We just grab some hostages and use them as bargaining chips with the family. Or maybe we can even take their identities. Okay, I mean, I'll go with the second part, but dang, grabbing a hostage? I get, I, that's too much. No need for that. We'll return to the Express now. Hmm. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? Ooh. Huh? As Donna's White Oak? But didn't you just say? Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of Asdonis White Oak just a moment ago. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. <sighs> oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know, too many modifications and all. <clears throat> anyway, let me check. Well, fork me. It says Donna's White Oak, all right. And there's a note. Mm. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. Oh, so we go there. No mistake. That's her message to you. She knew the hotel wasn't safe, so she suggested we find another place. Well, looks like we took a detour, but now it's back to the Astral Express. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. You're back? Two guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill, so I told them to wait in the parlor car. Oh, just in time. Two guests? Yeah. Who's the other one? Yeah, her too. Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. I assumed you were already acquainted with the Garden. Given the chaotic situation in Panacone, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly trust right now. Mm. You are the Memo Keeper. Pleased to meet you, Don Hung. I've seen you and others' memories. And as for Boot Hill, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's White Oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, Memo Keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. That's precisely what I intend to do. But before that, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Black oh. Swan, 
and I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo keeper. As for Acheron's story, I'm sure she knows it better than I do. If she's here... Greetings. I'm Acheron. What? You Garden of Recollection shirtbag! You betrayed me! <laughs> I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. Mm. To be honest, it was more like stalking than helping. And the process was far from unnoticed. But we did escape. I asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals. Namely, all of you. Mm. Trustworthy? <laughs> <laughs> Son of a nice lady. You think I'm dumb or something? How about this? I'll put a few bullet holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. Oh, then shoot. We can talk about trust. Oh, we're going with violence now? It doesn't have to be like that. I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. If my cover hadn't been blown, we might have had more time, but at the moment, we don't have any other options. No other options? What do you mean? This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. Ugh. This passenger is requesting... As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts, Don Hung. Please rest assured, your nameless companions are safe, but they need our help. As for Boot Hill, you may have guessed. I've been waiting for you. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Ooh. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. To return his relics to their rightful owner. Oh. Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens. A sign of their mercy upon the world. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods, shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet. So, how long has this rain been going on for? Oh dang, this is dark? I used to believe, just like you, that it would eventually stop. Years and decades past and in the end such hope faded away before the rain did looks like the god you mentioned doesn't exist after all but that day hey that moon looking thing looks kind of scary and cool at the same time but god damn well, let me share a story with the mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Like those shadows on the ocean. Sin thirsters, the obsessions of the path striders 
may emerge from the depths of Ix, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. They were once my dear companions, a group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war, a crusade that shook the universe. The universe witnessed the fall of Zuo, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. A price so hefty that only those who were there, the unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. So someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of the nihility. As for me, I've suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin thirsters, they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? Well, some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. <sighs> I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm is off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if, and it's just an if, if this is what the departed ones expected, should we try to change it? A good question, and a profound one. I don't know the answer. What I do know is that one day, I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, Someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. Oh, we're going back to Robin. Oh, this is crazy. Robin time. When I appeared as a child, my speech, mindset, and soul reflected immaturity and innocence. As I grew into adulthood, I left behind my childlike side. I humbly request your blessings, esteemed advocate of Shibe. Come to me, my kinship. I have sought their presence with us. As you wish. I have faithfully served the Alfalfa family for nearly a decade promoting the path of the harmony to the best of my ability. However, I made a mistake yesterday. While I was preparing dinner for the family head, I accidentally dropped a prepared dish on the floor. Mm. Out of laziness, I lied and claimed that everything was ready. <laughs> Although the head has dismissed me as punishment, it has been tough to sleep with the guilt still gnawing at me, as I worry that the seeds of evilness may have taken root in my soul. So, 
I confess to you now, to seek atonement for my sins. Do you sincerely repent and vow to change your ways? <sighs> yes. Have you examined your soul and confessed all your sins? Oh, yes. Are you willing to accept the process of atonement? <laughs> yes. Very well. Show your dedication and goodwill to the family, and you shall be reinstated among them. Now, please, leave in peace. Oh, praise she be. And thank you, esteemed advocate. Next, please step forward. I, I wholeheartedly confess to you. Please, pardon my sins. Rest assured, I have implored their presence to be with us. As long as you are sincere, absolution will be granted. Oh, oh, great. You know, I... I arrived in Panacone as a stowaway. I sold everything to get a ticket. My house, my land, and... my two children. I see. Please, go on. My children were starving. And I hoped they'd have a chance at survival if they became slaves here. If... if I can strike it rich here, I'll lift them out of that situation and give them the life they deserve. But the Bloodhound family got wind of it. They're on my tail, hunting me down. I thought I could bring my kids here. It, it was all my fault. All my fault. The family is ready to forgive all sinners. I'll ask the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. You don't need to live in fear anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I worked my hardest to redeem my children and make them part of the family. Praise, praise the harmony. Mm. Next. Please step forward. I don't know if he likes this. Hey, long time no see, Mr. Sunday. The most esteemed individual in Penacony, and the next leader of the Oak family. Right. I have sought their presence with us. Let us proceed. Sure, let's just get this over with. <clears throat> I have sinned, please forgive me. I wasted half a pizza at breakfast, and a bottle of Soul Glad. Really? That's why you came here? That's it. Nothing more. Can we wrap this up? I've got a robo-ball game to catch, you know? Do you... seek to atone for your sins through good deeds? My sins? Well, I'm starting to sound like a saint, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Neither the family nor you have the right to judge me. You think nobody knows what your precious family has done? About the watchmaker? Huh? <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Featherbrain. Those dream chasers might be fooled by your act, but don't fool yourself. Before you start spouting off your holy verses, answer me this. Where does the power of the Oak family come from? Hour. What makes you think you can sit there all high and mighty, looking down on everyone else? Well, I've spent enough time in confession today to enter the Harmony's Paradise, right? Then I'll take my leave. Good luck with your election, and uh, don't make me regret my investments in you. Now that I just annoy you, triple faced soul. Hear my doubts. Who can judge the strong when their power hides their crimes? Who can vouch for the weak when they will pay any price to survive? Who can comfort the purest souls when even they get led astray? If the strong defending the weak is truly the foundation of paradise, then who, who 
is responsible for the suffering and anguish in this wretched world. Brother? Brother? Brother, are you all right? I'm... fine. I've been working long hours, and I just made a trip to Dreamflux Reef and back. So, I'm a bit out of sorts. But it'll all be over before we know it. You've been working non-stop on the Germany Festival, Mr. Sunday, and no one could have predicted this incident. Even if the Stellaron does pose a grave threat, I still feel sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. <laughs> no need to worry about troubling anyone. The Charmony Festival was meant to spread joy and harmony across the cosmos. But now that we know the truth, I'm afraid we'll have to cancel it. It has always been our wish to make everyone happy, so... We'll do our best to explain everything to the Dream Master. I'm sure he'll understand. Hopefully. Even if the negotiation does not go smoothly, I'll refuse to go on stage. Without the Chordmaster, the Harmonious Choir would not arrive, and the Charmony Festival would be just a grand performance, and nothing more. <laughs> I'm relieved to see your determination. You know, since arriving in Penacone, we haven't had any contact with this Dream Master himself. I'd heard of the heads of the five major lineages, but the Dream Master is a mystery to me. The Dream Master rarely grants an audience, even for us. But, given the urgency of the situation, he's agreed to meet us in person. Oh, really? <laughs> Perhaps he'll be the first guest to meet the Dream Master in years, Mr. Yang. Yep. Let's hope we can reach a consensus that satisfies everyone. Indeed. Let us hope so. It's about time. We'll have to get ready for the meeting. I apologize for any inconvenience caused by the urgency. Don't worry. I'll be waiting here. here. Alright. Thank you for everything you've done. I'll be waiting here. Okay. Oh, I saw something. Oh. Oh. Mr. Sunday. Hey! Okay, see the moon in the sky? It's about the size of the cap on my Soul Glad bottle. If I just reached out my hand, I could grab the moon, couldn't I? Are they really kids, or are they just grown ones in disguise? <laughs> the moon? You mean the Grand Theater? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at me. I've been away from home for too long. I must be missing that moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's no big deal. The Grand Theater here looks much better than the moon back home. It's just magnificent. They told me not to sell everything I had just to come to Pentacone. How short-sighted. Selling everything you had? Why would you go to such lengths? Why? Can't you see? Life back home is miserable. It's not really living at all. It's better to be here at Pinnacone. No pain, no worries about tomorrow, just sweet dreams. You can do whatever you want. That's what I call living. <laughs> Yeah, now this is the life. Is this truly living? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what did you say, young lady? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> oh, it's nothing, sir. You see, the traffic on Glock's Avenue can be dangerous. How about I ask a Bloodhound family member to escort you to Idine Park over there? So you can continue enjoying your sweet dream. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Wow, no wonder you are the leader of this sweet dream. You're totally a lifesaver. See you around, Mr. Sunday. And uh, it was nice chatting with you. <laughs> <sighs> 
Ah, uh, Robin. What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. But why do they live like this? The man we ran into... He doesn't seem happy at all. Even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just illusions. But for him, they're the only way to survive, even if it means giving up on reality. That's not really living at all. I suppose you have a point. But, in my opinion, that's how most people live their lives. Why do you say that? You think that man is not actually living, but that's not quite accurate. Even without Panacone, people create their own illusions called self-value. People believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining power, and those deemed worthless are seen as the weak. However, value doesn't come out of thin air, and there's a limit to it. To accumulate value, people have to take from others. So, the weak get exploited and oppressed. Are you suggesting that this is not how things should be? Exactly. But, ironically, people don't think there's anything wrong with it. Because they uphold the illusory notion of self-value. And even the weak believe in it. The survival of the fittest. That's where all the tragedies in the world come from. People come to the sweet dream in Panacone to escape from that reality and find solace. No tragedies exist here, only happiness. Although in its nascent form, isn't that the same paradise we yearn for in our dreams? Uh, perhaps that man is just an exception. Let's not jump to conclusions. We should experience the dreamscape ourselves. Just as I did at Dreamflux Reef. Yeah. Yes. Seeing is believing. I'll accompany you. The Dream Master hasn't shown up yet, so we have some time for a stroll. Yeah. Mm, I want to do something else like that. Okay, where were we? Okay. Let's go over there. Glad to meet you again, Robin. How are the preparations for the Charmony Festival coming along? We're all so excited about it. <laughs> it's going smoothly. Thanks for making the trip to join the festival. You're too kind, Robin. It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so this jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever, would it get boring too? Nah, <sighs> not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight, and you never get old or sick. As long as you can afford a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality, right? That's exactly why I don't plan on bringing anything back. Just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me. I mean, I'm not one of those long-living species. I only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime, and uh, there's so much to worry about. Being happy here is pure bliss. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? Eh, I can't blame you there. I see. I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin! I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. <sighs> Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. She had a valid point. And I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is, she thinks she's in control of her life. 
But in reality, she's just escaping from reality and seeking solace in this sweet dream. Once she steps out of this sanctuary, everything will be lost. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room, didn't she? However, the paradise in our dreams, it doesn't have to end. No, and the paradise we yearn for shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. Alright, stuck to this old guy. The scenery in this dreamscape is truly breathtaking, isn't it? Oh, Robin. Can't believe I'm meeting you in person here. What an honor. You're right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. I find something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. Uh, with little time left, I yearn for meaningful conversations. Especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. Just speak your mind. You said, with little time left. Please, forgive me for being blunt. But is that why you came to Penacony? <laughs> yeah. I was part of a war, and while escaping from the Sarkozian mothership, I got exposed to some radioactive materials. And then, all my comrades died, and my hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. Mm. How heart-wrenching. I hope the family has been able to help you. They have, and I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room, the most advanced life support services in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. My true appearance. Huh. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So, you'll be living forever in this dreamscape. <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well, I don't really have much say in the matter. My world has been torn apart, and my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise, and I'll treasure every moment I spend here. <laughs> now I envy those everlasting things. Oh, that's sad. An old man's story. <coughs> mm. It's so tragic. Fortunately, this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life. Yeah. That's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists. However, even the sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain in reality. There will be a way out. Panacone is already on the right track. Is mm. that Robin now? Yeah. Or that faker or sparkle? <laughs> Look what we have here. A lovely young lady. Wait. Is that... Me? Yeah, Sparkle. Brother, what a surprise to see you again. Show yourself. Your trick won't work on us. 
I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation too. That must be you, right? Did you enjoy yourself? Barely. The people here are way too gullible. A little bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Oh, dang. <laughs> now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave before it's too late. The music of the Harmony doesn't tolerate discord. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? Oh, how disheartening. I've done so much for the family. You should be thanking me. Because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Penacolmi would still be in shambles. Don't you think? That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family. And it has nothing to do with us. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think you can scare me? You think I have no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, chicken wing boy. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure our lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of Harmony. Hanakoni, the land of the dreams. Is this truly the paradise you desire? Stop it. <laughs> What's the rash, chicken wing boy? Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Mast Fool. Leave now, or the family won't tolerate you anymore. All right, all right. I'll go. But Robin, I suggest you seriously consider this. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? Ugh. Well, I've done my part, and now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Here, the last two gifts for both of you. And don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds, remember to use them during the show. It'll be thrilling. Bang! I heard a raven cawing in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Okay, wait over there. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to arrive. Okay. By the way, brother. I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. Back when we were kids, you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you, or anyone in particular. We are carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams. It shouldn't be like this. Hanakoni is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase the worries and pain of reality or bring you happiness. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. Remember the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. That might be true, but... Even without Penacone, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now he is receiving hospice care in a comatose state, and his fate is sealed. Is Penacone granting these people a future? Or is it taking it away from them? Hmm. Yeah, these are deep questions. Really depends on the person. Well, don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. People mistakenly believe that flight is inherent to birds because they've never witnessed those birds crashing to their death. 
Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah. We took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers. And later, when I decided to leave Penacone, I opened the cage and set it free. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to its death right in front of your window. I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Mm -hmm. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. Birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages. They belong in the sky, even if they can't fly. But here's the thing. If there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? Are you implying that the same goes for humans too? Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. That's because the pursuit of the Trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? That's just... sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right to determine the future. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. While this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal and the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the Odes of Harmony have always taught us. While the Harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong, and the weak will always be weak. Even in this carefree dream, human nature contains greatness, but it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. Mm. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. But if yeah. people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you, my brother, don't believe that the harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? Really up to you guys to decide. People often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Are you reading, sister? What are you reading? Mr. Gopher White gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. If I could become a corn master. with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy <laughs> I see then I would summon the harmonious choir too don't you 
have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that it includes your wish and everyone else's. I long for a true paradise where everyone can find peace. Then let's build a stage there and invite everyone to our performance so that both our wishes come true through the power of the harmonious choir. It's a deal then. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? Hmm. Maybe you will have to become a star first. Oh, ah, well, now we're going back to us. Eight hours. You're back sooner than I thought. Any results? Why, did something happen? Oh, yes. yeah. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. <laughs> Since he's already carried out his last wish, my final mission is complete. But pardon me if I sound curt. It's good to have determination. The path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude, staking everything on some nameless in the future? But you have the numbers, and in numbers comes strength. So that might just delay your inevitable a little more. Oh, got any more encouraging words? <laughs> As I see it, relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Regardless of whether the other party will be compliant, negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals and won't grant us an upper hand. Henakoni is our rival's home turf, and we already have very few chips left to play with. Rather than idly sit around while the family's got us blocked off, an offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most, and since it's the key to stabilizing the sweet dream, it's vital to the family's interests. By attacking their core interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. Mm -hmm. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight. And if we brute force it, even if we succeed, it's too risky. That's true. So no one's going to say anything? Then I'll raise my hand. I know the answer to this question. Oh, really? You would all be... <laughs> Okay, of course you do. I never doubt you for a second. Looks like. Okay, looks like we have one more ace in our sleeve. Time for a master stroke. I'll say this. Why are you speaking like the general of the law, Fu? <laughs> so, I heard that before the Charmony Festival begins, there will be a pageant to kick off the festival. It's called the Soul Glad TM Festivity Auditions or something, and it's going to be held in the moment of Scorch Sand. As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of Festive Superstar, and be able to personally bask in the graces of Miss Robin. Uh, not that that's important. <laughs> What's crucial is that we can enter the Grand Theater before the audience arrives. So, how do we go about participating in these festivity auditions? Yeah, how we do that? <laughs> I've already procured special invite tickets from Miss Robin's fan club. Uh, to tell you the truth, I had been preparing to join the auditions all along. But now it looks like even if I scrape through, I probably still won't have the chance to shake Miss Robin's hand. So they're still running this thing, huh? It was originally just a publicity stunt set up by Mikhail to drum up attention. But it looks like it might be worth a shot. We'll follow March's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? I'm afraid I won't have the time. As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. 
Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. Mm -hmm. We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now everyone, let's prepare to move out. Interesting. I did not expect in this. Oh wow, they've really outdone themselves. I'm starting to get excited. Yeah, the hype. Yes. As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of the challenges? Ooh, there are some questions now. Would you be open to a brief exclusive interview with us? It'll be quick. Your journey is long and fraught with peril, yet under a sky blanketed by banners, you buy for the crown. <laughs> the knight's head is hard as steel. Brother Land's focus is stubborn as a heel. We don't all have to be winners. But if we don't have fun, <laughs> we'd all be sinners. <laughs> People are pouring in. Kinda feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up. Let's get in there quickly and enter the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please make way. <laughs> make way. One of Penacone's top ten wealthiest tycoons and the soul glad business empire's founder, Mr. Ideen. Ideen. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soul Glad's factory, Ideen Leader. My four friends, introduce yourselves to the audience across the cosmos. Mm, hello, everybody. I'm Himiko, a nameless from the Astral Express. And these are my companions. Ahem. <clears throat> Don't you guys need to hide your identities? I can't hide it anyways. Penacone is plastered with our posters. And because the Astral Express is so well known, the family won't dare to make any rash moves. Yeah. Okay, um, what the hell can I say? Hello? Uh, I want to say this. Uh, don't expose my net handle to everyone. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I'm Part Seven. I'm an ordinary girl who loves adventures. Hello, everyone. I'm Firefly. Mm, I am also an ordinary girl who enjoys adventures. So it's a bunch of nameless guests. This final face-off is bound to be spectacular. Time is precious. My four friends, come with me. Grab a bottle of Soul Glad and make your dreams of black. All right. Well, I'm gonna enjoy this. Yep.
Yeah. Hey. Hey. Okay. All right, let's go. This place is buzzing. Mm -hmm. That's right. This venue is a miniature representation of that time known as the era filled with boundless possibilities. Ooh. Oh, I like this place. Whoa, okay. Now this is cool right here. Grab a bottle of soul glad and make your dreams of black. Nameless, your arrival reminds me of the grand occasion when Pentacony was first established. I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. Once, during a particularly grueling day, I passed out and was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind, and that was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all know and love today. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Hall is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Pentacone. Now then, is there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? Hmm. Nah, we'll win. <laughs> oh, that's definitely from Jushin Kaisen. Okay, can we get the ball rolling already? I ain't got all day. Oh, no, I'm saying this. No, I'm saying this. Nah. <laughs> that's the trailblazing spirit. How about you, Miss March? Next up, get ready for the Mega March 7th Adventure, where I'm going to break the speed run world record! <laughs> Trailblazing into the uncharted and challenging the limits. That's Miss March 7th for you. How about Miss Firefly? I hope that by the end of this journey, everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hope for. Ah, <laughs> a wonderful wish! Miss Himiko, what are you expecting from your team? Safety first, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Simple words, but full of warmth. Waiting for you are three stages, each connected to that era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from, with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. A beloved contender whose noble virtues are unrivaled. Those are the rules. Simple. Everyone clear? Now, I hereby announce that the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, has started. All right. Everyone, as the Charmony Festival is drawing closer, we must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, splitting up into two groups is the best choice. Oh, can I be with Firefly then? March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long and aren't overly familiar with her. It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Fine by me. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, no chit chat, let's go. So, what now? I get to pair off with Fava, there's no catch. Um, I'll say this. We'll split into the assigned groups then. Let's not waste time. Alright. Alright. 
Welcome to the first stage of Soul Glad Enterprises' 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, <laughs> Dreamplay Fantasia. In this stage, you can choose between two challenges, the School of Acting or School of Action. I want a School of Action. In the School of Action, challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the School of Action challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. Now, make your choice. I want, I want action. I want to know what the script does. Hmm. Ooh. Wow, this is cool. Okay, press the button to drag down the slit challenging areas. Okay. Um Hmm. Alright, I want to see this one. The stage of dreams for those who dare to dream. Welcome to the school of acting stage. Okay, we'll just do this. I'll shoot. Competitors, allow me to introduce the rules of this challenge to you. There are three stages up ahead. On each, you will find an outline of a script. These three scripts were written by the legendary filmmaker, The Watchmaker, and depict various stories from Penacone's era of pioneering. Your task is to bring those moments to life, find the right words, and act convincingly to make the judges feel the script's intended emotions. Oh, I wish you a successful performance. Also, a bit of trivia. The record score for this stage is held by a participant with fiery red hair. His exceptional performance brought even the strictest judge to tears. Oh, it's like he wasn't even acting at all. Wait, I wonder if that's him. I forgot his name, though. <laughs> we are running out of time, so let's get this over with quickly. All right. All right. I don't know. Oh, one more thing. Okay. Oh, just take a look at this pair. Such star quality. Since you come as a pair, I'll prep a two-person scene for you. You two. Are you ready? Ready. Envision that you both. Driven by the spirit of exploration, are arriving at the land of dreams that is Panacone for the first time. But instead of lush lands, you find yourselves amidst swirling sands and desolation, far from the paradise the watchmaker described. You're driving an old clunker through the wilderness of the dreamscape, braving the cold wind, choking on the dust. And suddenly, a fierce memory zone mean blocks your path. Now, Miss Greyhair, what line would you deliver to express your disappointment in Panacone? Uh... Oh my gosh. Um, freak. not right. You're trying to express disappointment. Why do you sound so chipper? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just has to happen. Okay, here. Very good. Now, though you're disappointed, your screen partner is conversely very enthusiastic. Now, young lady, you will say... Very good, very intense. And then we cut to the story's next scene. 
You find a job mending the rails. But the days are long, and your endurance can't keep up, and you finally collapse in the endless expanse of the desert. Suddenly, sweet rain falls from the sky, wetting your lips and arousing your spirits. Now, Miss Greyhair, what line will best express your surprise at this moment? Uh, I'll say this. But at this moment, your partner yet gazes into the sky, both her eyes closed. The raindrops fall, blurring her vision, and she tragically says... Perhaps we were never meant to succeed. Right? Fantastic! Both of you have an incredibly solid foundation in dialogue delivery. However, minds aren't everything in a performance. Please continue this story on the second stage. Up next, you'll be challenged with a body language test. Oh, okay. I hope these tests won't take too long. All right, let's do our best. Get these. Give me my treasure. Give me my treasure. All right. Here, you two are required to skillfully utilize body language to portray the story context I've laid out for you. All right. Picking up from where we left off, a heavy downpour saves you both stranded in the desert. This rain quenches the anger in your heart. You look to your companion, now completely devoid of fighting spirit wanting to comfort her. At this moment, what should you do to make her laugh? Mm -mm. Tell her a dad joke? Okay, I'll say this. The test now is about body language. I don't think dialogue is allowed here. Okay. <laughs> How about this? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I like their di dynamic. Right answer. Your companion sees you rolling about in the sand and thinks about the arduous obstacles along this journey. She can't help but let loose a laugh, rekindling hope in her heart. And so this girl. I'm <laughs> gonna get back feet and keep moving forward. A tug at the heartstrings. The story continues to develop. The heavy rain leads you both to sense a business opportunity. So you start venturing into the umbrella industry. But just as the business begins to pick up, competitors start flooding the market with low priced goods, squeezing your market share. You have no choice. The goods you stockpiled at high prices have to be sold at a loss. This is a pretty self-destructive move, which drives your business to the brink of bankruptcy. At this moment, what would you, who refuses to admit defeat, decide to do? Hmm. You know what I mean? Oh. I'll say this. But this do. Fantastic. But it's a pity your friend does not agree. Seeing that you're up to your eyeballs in debt, she sees nothing but despair in her future. And then... Then she does this. Uh, I leave Panacone in utter disappointment! Is that okay? <gasps> of course! Absolutely! I was this close to tears! Both of you possess exceptional acting talent! However... The true test is yet to come. You're about to encounter the harshest judge this show has ever seen. You'll need to rely on perfect performances if you want to win them over. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ha! 
Alright, hold on. Let me get one of these stuff first. Why can't you open this one? God damn it, okay. Welcome to the final stage. Actually, all the scenarios that you previously encountered were all from the film Once Upon a Time in Dreams. Two companions <laughs> arrive on Panacone with nothing but a dream. Their desire for achievement is met with continuous setbacks. Ultimately, one continues on, despite spiraling into debt, while the other concedes defeat and leaves. Many years later, their paths cross once more in the thriving Penacone. Yet, they refuse to acknowledge each other because... Uh... This. Against the backdrop of a revitalized Penacone, the joy of reunion mixes with the sorrow of past separation, the awkwardness of being strangers, and the shyness of a long-awaited encounter, all converging at this very moment. Give it a shot. Try and convey this bittersweet scene to me. Bring it to life with precise and emotive acting. Oh, we're gonna do that? I thought we we're acting. <laughs> okay, fine. Your performance is far from satisfactory. Okay, let me start with happy. God! I never imagined that such a could be portrayed by you two in such a joyful and heartwarming way. Two people sharing a long cherished friendship, as if time and status meant nothing to them. Huh? But we haven't even done anything! Is his imagination running wild again? Brilliant! Your portrayal outdoes the original. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hold on. What is this? Oh, another music one. Okay. Let me steal something over here. Ooh. You know what? Give me a second. Alright, I'm done. Okay, I've done all that, I think. All right, let's continue. Congrats to both of you for clearing the stage, but more importantly, are you having fun? <laughs> fun is more important than success. Look at the time. You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did. <laughs> that red-haired contestant? Who is that exactly? You'll find out eventually, but only if you clear the next test first. Welcome to the second stage of the 33rd Scotch Sand Festival in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises. Gunfire time! You have the option to choose gunfire and undergo Brother Hanu's trial, or time, where you'll face Clucky's trial. Mm. And now, make your choice! Yeah, I've done the action one, but then eh, just wanted to see what this one was about. Hmm. I don't gotta see what, what people choose in this challenge. Hmm. Gunfire, gunfire trial or high. Time trap. Time trial. 
No, I want to see what this gunfire does. Dear friends, welcome to the enchanting universe created by the Watchmaker. <laughs> Awaiting you is the morally dubious yet ever charming character from the animated Clocky series, Hanu! It is said that these cartoon characters were inspired by the Watchmaker's own experiences. According to research by Clocky scholars, the original Hanu of reality shared a deep friendship with the Watchmaker, akin to comrades in arms. Enter into the world of Hanu via the TV by the entrance and partake in an enchanting and suspenseful story with him. Good luck in there. If it's a gunfire trial, we should be able to settle this with a fight, right? I hope this won't waste too much of our time. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Are we... Are we both in control of this Hanu character? Um... Very good. <laughs> Looks like you've got the hang of it. In this Hanu's adventure episode, Boss Stone has gathered his battleships for an assault on Dreamville. Old Buzzfly, Cousin Wolf, and Bombhead are all raring to go. The brave Hanu must thwart their advance and protect his home. Alas, Hanu presently is ill-equipped to fend off the malevolent mischief makers, which is why he is preparing to seek out the puzzle gentleman's aid. Go forth and speak to him. All right. Oh, brave Hanu, you look like you could really use some help. Oh, do we have to go over here? Long time no see, Hanu. You look pretty stressed out. How about an intense and thrilling game of Dream Jigsaw to blow off some steam? Ah, uh, actually, I got fly. I don't know. That was fun. Oh yeah, I don't think we can say that, can we? Yeah. Oh my! Are you telling me that Boss Stone has rallied the villains to seize Dreamville? What a dreadful twist of fate! Listen closely, Hanu. I'm aware you're in need of a suitable weapon. And I also know there's one just upstairs. But you know what? You'll have to play an exhilarating round of Dream Jigsaw first. No Jigsaw, no moving forward. Yeah, we gotta say this. Now scurry along, Hanu, but tread carefully. Two ne'er-do-wells are also eyeing those jigsaw pieces. Either outsmart them with the quick knockout, or ensure they don't catch you in the act. I can't wait to see you finish the dream jigsaw. Best of luck, Hanu. Let's stay alert and make sure those monsters don't spot. It appears we can't climb the stairs in our current state. Now oh, come on. Yes, we can't. How are we gonna do this bullshit? Alright, give me this. Is that motherfucker here? What the heck, hell no! Give me that! Give that shit, run! That's all the jigsaw pieces! Let's hurry back!
back. Sorry about that. All right, there. Oh my! The exquisite sensation of perfect alignment. My organizational itch has been quite thoroughly scratched. Hurry now, Hanu. Touch that TV set and transform back into your old self. Then head upstairs. Your weapon awaits you there. Are such haphazard instructions really okay? I guess so. Uh, disconnecting from that thing so suddenly has left me feeling slightly disoriented. What's this? Man, I don't look around. Is that Hanu? Ah, oh, it looks like it. I'll oh, shoot. Man, what exactly is he talking about? Tick tock. It's time for me to make an appearance! Yeah, Clocky. How come you're here too? Clocky? Uh, I can also see him. Is this character part of the show? Looks like it. In Dreamville, Clocky is everywhere and can do anything! Like right now! I can be your translator! Tick tock! <laughs> Says, battle! We must do battle! <laughs> the enemy is at our doorstep, and we have no path of retreat for the future of Dreamville! <laughs> <laughs> Touch that suspicious looking TV right now! Alright. So they just jumped inside that TV. Sheesh. Logic in this plot and dialogue is really being pushed to its limits. Hmm. How are you doing with a cartoon? There's still such thing as logic with a cartoon. <laughs> All right, well, let's go. Here we go again. Ready? Gradually getting used to this. Huh. Who knows? I might even be able to perform some high level moves with Hanu. No? Oh, did someone say high level movies just now? <laughs> That's right, pal. The upcoming script is just exploding with all sorts of high level shenanigans. Last we saw, Hanu was preparing for battle. Suddenly, he hears heavy footsteps coming from the hallway. The mischief makers have broken into his home. But brave Hanu won't go down without a fight. He instantly sprints for the storage room, ready for a do or die showdown against the baddies. But we still don't have any weapons in hand. Guess what? Hanu's favorite bazooka just so happens to be in that storage room. <laughs> so get a move on. <sighs> A coincidentally convenient plot twist. It'd be even more awesome if the organizers allowed me to wear armor. <laughs> but you can now. We gotta play by the rules. It's behind the shelves, right? We gotta be sneaky. Wait, what is that? Oh, cool. Give me that rocket. He wasn't lying. There's actually a bazooka here. Now we should have a way of dealing with those baddies. This thing feels just like the Sword and Locust, too. Looks like we've got more 
company. Fire. Uh -uh. What more again? Oh, you motherfuckers. Here we go again. But no big deal. We're pretty handy with this bazooka now. Eh, 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 eh. Give me this right here. Give me all this. Bitch. 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 Why are you playing these games? I ain't playing these games. Well, oh, man. Wow, oh, winner. Them, right? Oh, my. Oh, he's on a street. Everyone, the stage is complete. Quickly, head through the TV to the next stage. All right. I want to get all these first. Let go of this bazooka. <laughs> um, never mind. <laughs> Let's hurry over to the next stage. Oh, give me that treasure first. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that thing in there. Wait, there was something up there. Well, not our music. Little, little Caesar. That kind of reminds me of Little Caesar Pizza. I don't know if I can get up there. Okay, let me do something real fast. What? Oh, shoot. Uh oh. Um, no, I have to go back. Yeah, take me up there. I'll probably have to do that later. I think that might lead me to upstairs then. Oh, let's just see. Oh, never mind. All right, let's do it. Congratulations to both of you. Oh, you've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves. But, uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Pentacone's festive superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. Welcome to the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival's third stage in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises Superstar Showdown. All right. What's the second one? No, I'm just gonna do this. Seems like we're gonna fight someone, so... Oh, him! Yeah! Okay. No way. I think I just saw someone. Someone 
Extraordinary. Oh, it's our old friend Crime. Yeah. What? There's no voice acting in this? Come on! Well, I'm not reading it. Uh, are you a knight of beauty? Yeah. Yep, it was him. Did they forgot to put a acting on to him? I would like to hear his voice. The Night of Beauty. Oh, he's gonna join us. Oh, we're fighting him. Behold, the symbol of pure. <laughs> high stakes, high reward. Come on, this better work. God damn. Jesus, it took a lot to just meet you. We don't have much time. May fate allow us to meet again, Knight of Beauty. Yeah. In that case, let's make our way to the end. Panacone's really thronging with talent. I hope we make it in time. Hopefully. Jesus Christ, that took a lot. Just to meet him. Yeah. Alright. right there. Is that us? Oh yeah, that is us. Ooh. Oh, March and everyone's here. Okay. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival. Ah, oh, Sunday. Before entering the Grand Theater. I, on behalf of the organizers, Extend my sincere congratulations to you. Wishing you joy under their radiance. What are you doing here? Yeah. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Penacone and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. What is this? Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. What? Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. 
Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent, common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacony would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest, or a sweet dream paradise for all? Oh shoot, I didn't mean to! That's not the point! Don't let him mislead you! Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacone's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacone. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. Uh-oh. A while ago? You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the Charmody Festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacone. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Mm -hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask. Did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? <sighs> I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. Hmm. Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up, and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous, and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, 
The entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin. Could I trust you, you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence, so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god, never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself, always heeding their admonishments? Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. Ah. Oh. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned, are they truly Shipe? Mr. Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king. Embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great one? She may. Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, Echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause someday, Please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? What? Oh, shoot.
Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. It's a pity that things have turned out this way. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Panacone is actually... Him. We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Penacony. Mm. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless, it would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. You want to talk to terms with us, not being around the bush and get to the point. I'll say oh, this. I intend to, but that hinges on the outcome of this negotiation. If it is the order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. Mm. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands. And just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle. Establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I, possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. Yeah, that's interesting. If Miss Himiko is interested, Let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me. Everyone, let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in Panacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Are you friends with us? Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so she should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. 
A story about a baby bird. Oh. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster. And the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Panacone, yeah. saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived a time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony Dove all on its own. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Okay. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, mm. and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Oh. Or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. Okay, now we're gonna answer now? Ah, oh, this is crazy. Alright, hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, man, that shoes? I want to hear what everyone has to say first. That guy just casually throws this kind of question at us? What exactly is his deal? But, fine. I'll answer, I guess. If it were me, I guess I'd choose to build a cage for the little Charmony Dove. After all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something. And that'd just be too sad. It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quiz, I suppose it's fine to humor him. Back to the question. I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. Mm. Ball of fame. for his intentions right now, but based solely on that question, I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. Even if I was going to release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If I left it where I found it, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. Mm. So everyone thinks that they built a cage. But, huh, oh, this is gonna be hard. Yeah. You know what? I'm choosing the cage.
I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. We passionately nursed it back to health. Oh, yeah, fuck. Only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. I watched it for a long while by the window. Probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony Dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground, only to keep trying. Hey, I forgot what happened. Finally, on the 137th attempt, it succeeded. But its attempt did not go perfectly. After flying unsteadily for a while, it fell to the ground, unable to grasp the direction of the air currents. The fall shattered its wings. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught, finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our tender care, our given love and hopes, they all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. I deeply regret the choices we made. Next, let us head to the second decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. Dream chaser. Mm. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia, a position exclusive to the Oak family charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy, sorrow, arrogance, regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world and I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He was a dream chaser and an illegal stowaway. Mm. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life, except that, to most people, the price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them, and that at least they could eat if they lived as slaves. Oh yeah, I forgot, yeah. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune, and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy, and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit, so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels, until his inevitable judgment arrives? I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. This is a tough question, though. I mean, I would choose him not to because he did sell his kids. I'm so, how come I didn't miss that? How come I missed that part? Did he sell his kids? A dream 
Moon Chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably ask the Bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend them a hand. But what cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this incident. It seems illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacony. But that guy in the story, I don't think he deserves any sympathy at all. He sold his kids to chase a dream. Even if he intended to go back for them, it's still insanely irresponsible. With that thought, there's only one choice. Let the Bloodhound send him back home. This person deserves to be punished. This question... Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough Sunday aims to use to persuade us. Yeah. I'd probably choose to ask the Bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. Yeah, it is the same thing when you think about it as the but last question. I'm, I'm choosing this. It seems you, like me, are pondering whether a different choice could have led to a better outcome. Sadly, his fate would only be more tragic. Say he never gets caught. He would only die from delirium. The methods with which illegal stowaways enter dreams are unorthodox. Not flawless like the hotels. Living in the dreamscape would be a mere pipe dream. Should he be apprehended? Could the hounds afford to turn a blind eye? The answer is a definitive no. They couldn't bear the resulting consequences, and thus wouldn't dare extend a helping hand. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision. And the story this time is my own. Oh. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master. And as per his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents. And it was a letter from my sister. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. 
by the eon above. The bullet struck her neck directly, yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony. It didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. Those damned savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Oh, he says. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? Mm. How could this happen? Miss Robin? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, many times, it is nothing more than wishful thinking. Likewise, I've prepared one last question. One last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences. Because this is merely a figment of imagination. A nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? Mm. What's with these questions? I often feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them. Fighting for survival against some unfathomable force. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me. But I also remember they chose never to give up. Just like Miss Robin. Mm -hmm. If Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experiences. With each trailblaze, dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hung from reaching their next destination? I believe you have an answer of your own in your heart. I can't believe that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I... I don't know what I'd do. Courage is admirable. And here I was thinking she was just another superstar celebrity. But the fact that she's also Mr. Sunday's younger sister? No, I doubt he'd wish harm on his own flesh and blood, no matter how grand the ambition. No, I already made my decision. Yes. <laughs> I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Oh, you're back. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain because this is not what happiness is at all. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life and this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. 
So what is your definition of living a happy life? <laughs> Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion. A cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. Mm -hmm. During these hard-earned rest days, people are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. And thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. Mm. Ah, Ning! This is big. There be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Hmm. Okay, now I understand a uh, Sunday's perspective. Miss hmm. Firefly. You, who are stricken with Entropy Loss Syndrome, you of all would surely understand this. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> it sounds like a flawless theory. <sighs> hmm. But what is the price to attain all this? The cost is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Wakening? Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. Mm. But in this supposed bliss, 
people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature and from there show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? Mm. <laughs> because I don't think so. Yeah. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. Alright. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. I didn't see that choice. Alright, this is before. What is this place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. But weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. Mm -hmm. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Penicone best among us. Hmm. I, I don't know much about dream bubbles, but if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Yep. <laughs> this place looks a bit familiar. Yeah, I've been here. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, mm -hmm. which we now know as Dormancy. Considering its connection to Dreamflux Reef, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. Mm -hmm. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Do you have any idea, Misha? Hmm. I guess... maybe this way? All right, we'll follow I, you. I'm not entirely sure, but... Let's give it a try. Wait, you managed to choose the right door? Yeah, I'll shoot. Weird. Oh, come on! This place is quite different from the hotel. But 
I just, I feel like I've been here before and even lived here for a while. Wait, I just realized his eyes got like a key hole in it when you look at it. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clucky and I used to sit by the fire, listening to the crackling of firewood. And, and the room on the other side was the toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them. Hold on, this doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So, what is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. Don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Yep. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah. Yeah. Then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Alright. Alright, give me a second.